Warning, this video contains team selection and captain choices which some viewers may find offensive. Hey guys and welcome back to FPL TV. Before starting today, a quick word about OneFootball who have kindly sponsored this video. The world's best football news app is now even better, relaunching with a fresh new design. Gain access to news, scores and stats from leagues all over the world with a brand new interface that's cleaner, simpler and smarter than ever. As for FPL, you can follow each team in the Premier League and get live updates from all the goals and assists every game week. Download it for free using the link in the description box below. The big decision I made last week was to bench both of my Man City defenders, Stones and Diaz, who had served me very well since wildcarding them in. They had kept six clean sheets on the bounce before that visit to Anfield, and luckily they did concede, which made it not a bad decision to bench them. Unfortunately though, my two differential defenders, Ben Mee and Rudiger, weren't able to capitalise on City conceding anyway, and on Rudiger's debut for my team, he ended up scoring an own goal against Sheffield United. Disaster. Ben Mee was my transfer in last week, so not the best start for him, but with a nice double game week on the horizon now for Burnley, hopefully he can still be a decent option for me. The bad luck continued in game week 23 for me, where on top of Rudiger's own goal, I also had an early injury to Callum Wilson and a very harsh red card for Suchek. So luck definitely wasn't on my side this time out. There was also a blank from Antonio against Fulham, who may too have picked up an injury. The rest of my team managed to salvage a respectable game week though, with the three big hitters Sterling, Son and my captain Fernandez all returning points. And it was no surprise to see Son Heung-min's return to form coinciding with Harry Kane's return from injury. There were also returns from the ever-reliable Bamford and Martinez last week, and it needs to be said what a superb option Martinez has been in FPL this season. The current highest scoring keeper that I can't see myself removing until the end. So for game week 23, my team scored a lowly 57, one point below the average last week and therefore a 50k drop in the rankings. I don't think my team was particularly bad for last game week and overall I think it was more down to a bit of bad luck, with an injury, a red card and an own goal all coming within one game week. Even so, I can't have too many complaints because luck has been on my side for the previous six game weeks where I managed six consecutive green arrows, so the run had to come to an end eventually. It was also simply one of those game weeks where all the popular players that I don't own all did well, including the likes of Stuart Dallas, Calvert-Lewin, Ilkay Gundogan and James Justin, four great FPL options that have been really painful not to own in recent game weeks. So let's move on to game week 24 now and check out my potential transfer plans as well as my current team lineup. Also, if you're enjoying the content here at FPL TV, then be sure to leave a like and most importantly get subscribed. You can also hit the notification bell so you always know when a new video goes live. There's currently a few different injury concerns in my squad for game week 24, but in the last few days we've now had confirmation that Callum Wilson will unfortunately be out for possibly six weeks with a hamstring injury. With a double game week this week for Everton against Fulham and Man City, moving Wilson onto Calvert-Lewin was looking the absolute no-brainer, with the Everton forward just hitting a bit of form as well. That move may now be off the cards though, due to Calvert-Lewin now picking up an injury during the cup in midweek. The plan as usual is to wait for any more updates on Calvert-Lewin's fitness up until the game week deadline, but if he is set to miss out then I'll have to look elsewhere. If Calvert-Lewin is out injured, then it's Ollie Watkins of Aston Villa who will come in for Callum Wilson, a player that I've been very impressed with this season and has played every minute of every Premier League game. What I like about Watkins is that he offers me a rotation-free, solid 90-minute man for a budget-friendly price, and I also really like Aston Villa's upcoming fixtures all the way until game week 30, which likely means he'd be a long-term hold. With no wildcard in hand for me anymore, I want to be considering the long term with my transfer moves, and I think transferring in an Aston Villa attacker for their upcoming fixtures certainly ticks that box. Watkins is also in superb form of late, scoring in four of the last five league games, and we can't forget that Aston Villa also have a few games in hand as well, therefore still a couple of double game weeks to come at some point in the near future. With no transfers made yet, let's see how the team currently lines up. There's four double game week players in my side this week, and had Calvert-Lewin not picked up that injury, then it surely would have been five. 
I've got two free transfers available and therefore could target more double game week players. But as mentioned, with no wild card in hand anymore, I've got to consider the longer term and there's no other Everton, Burnley or Fulham players that I'm particularly interested in. One of my reasons for holding Marcus Rashford this long was for United's next two fixtures against West Brom and then Newcastle. So hopefully he can be a good differential for me in these upcoming game weeks. Once again, what Game Week 24 does bring is a plethora of benching headaches. And as things stand, I've got Rudiger and Soufal benched at home to Newcastle and Chef United respectively. Two really good chances for clean sheets there. Soufal I'm okay with benching, because Chef United have improved a bit lately, so I'm thinking maybe they can nick a goal. But as for Rudiger, I am fancying a clean sheet there for Chelsea, especially with Newcastle missing Callum Wilson. I'm still waiting on some fitness updates for Antonio at West Ham as well, so at the very least, Rudiger can provide some decent cover should Antonio get ruled out. With me having two free transfers available, I need to use one of them this week, and that means the benching headaches are only going to get worse if I transfer in Calvert-Lewin or Watkins for Callum Wilson. If either of those strikers come in, then I will be tempted to bench Son Heung-min this week. With Harry Kane back from injury, I still like Son as an option for the long term, but away to Man City this week, I'm not sure I can see Son delivering much here. Spurs aren't in the best of form lately, whilst their opponents Man City have only conceded one goal in their last seven Premier League games. For this reason, statistically, Son's odds of a goal are fairly low, and benching him for the likes of Calvert-Lewin, Watkins or even Rudiger could be the correct call. A risky call of course, but one that I'm certainly leaning towards. For the captaincy in game week 24, as things stand, I've got the armband on Raheem Sterling ahead of Man City's double game week. To be fair, on paper, it's not the best double game week with fixtures against Tottenham and Everton. But watching both those teams play out a 5 4 goal fest in midweek against each other, that's nine goals conceded between them. So maybe City can put a few past each of them, especially in the form they're in. Sterling was also subbed off early during his midweek cup game, which gives me a bit more assurance that hopefully he will start both games. Of course, with Man City, there's always the fear of rotation, and the lure of a double game week can sometimes take your focus away from the single game week fixtures. Because of this, Bruno Fernandes against West Brom still remains a strong consideration of mine, with the Baggies having a horrendous defensive record since Big Sam took charge. West Brom have now conceded 36 goals in just the last 13 games. That's 12 more than any other team in that time. So although Bruno only has the one fixture this week, he could still end up being the outstanding choice. So that's all my thoughts for my team heading into game week 24. As always, if you want to see the final team lineup, as well as transfers and captaincy choice, then you can find it all over on Twitter shortly before the game week deadline. Good luck to all of you watching for game week 24, FPL responsibly and I'll catch you all very soon.